Staring out the window, reaching for a North Star. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Georgia, also known as Secret Vet, over on Instagram. And today I thought we would do a little lambing 101. So things to pack in your bag to take with you, things that I think are useful for you to know before you go lambing, or mistakes that I made that hopefully you won't make. First of all, I'll just talk a little bit about my experience lambing. So I am a second year vet student. That means that I've been lambing once before last year for, for my AHEMS, which is my animal husbandry kind of placement requirements for the course. And this means that um, last Easter, I went up to a farm in Yorkshire and I spent three weeks helping farmers um, give birth to lambs basically um i tried to think of a really you know technical way of wording this it's literally helping you give birth to lambs um and that's in essence what you'll be doing for however long you decide to do your placement for so last year i went up to yorkshire for three weeks had a great time it was really really tough long hours um, normally you'll work in kind of day shifts and night shifts depending on which placement you end up at so for me i worked a day shift which was probably 9 10 depending on what time i went to bed the night before and then work all the way through till tea time or dinner <laughs> and then we'd have a little bit of a rest a little bit of sleep and then you'd be up for the night shift now the night shifts were kind of split up into three shifts so someone could take the like early night shift so that would be like 11 till 1 and then you'd have 1 till 3 and then 3 till 5 and then the morning work would continue again. So for me I was normally on the like middle shift so the 1 till 3 kind of time which was I went like absolutely hell on earth for the first week that I was there. I wasn't used to being waking up and having to go help give birth to lambs at 1am. I found it really, really um difficult to like kind of get used to that sleeping schedule. But by the second week, I was kind of in the swing of things. I was spoken to other people who did no night shifts whatsoever. They only worked in the day. And then some people did um rotor night shifts. So they do like one night on, one night off. And um, because there wasn't that many of us there at the time, I ended up working... A night shift every single night for three weeks and as you can imagine at the end of three weeks it starts like getting to you a bit it's not it's, i wasn't feeling the freshest so yeah basically what i wanted this video to be is kind of like a checklist so i'm going to go through all the things that i packed with me um lambing and the things that i'm going to pack this year because i'll be off in two weeks so my bag's not packed yet but i've got everything pretty much sorted that i want to take so the first thing uh obviously is a bag i took one of these um pack away duffel bags so this was a 60 liter bag and there's no way i'm getting this out because it's a nightmare to get back in basically it is a 60 liter duffel bag that's folded up inside here so you can just take it out and it's really really lightweight i don't know whether you can see the type of material it is this bag was great because it's super lightweight i really didn't want to take a suitcase because depending on where you're staying at your placement some farms will give you a nice big spacious room and other farms don't have the room to accommodate um you and your six piece luggage set so something like this something easy a duffel bag that you can chuck loads of stuff in and is big enough to fit you know all the all your clothes and everything in is pretty much ideal so the next thing let me just grab it so the next couple of things that i want to talk about are really down to preference but they're things that like i took did i use them all the time no but they were pretty useful so the first one um is gloves they're more hygienic they're better for your hands if you're used to lambing with your actual like normal hand and then you put a glove on it can feel a bit like weird at first but it's just something that you get used to and it's better for the you and it's better for the lamb i can't actually remember where i got this one but any like farm vet supply store will have these these are arm length examination gloves you get 100 so these are like your classic like rectal examination gloves basically the really good thing is they cover your whole arm these are just the ones that i have with me so they literally look like this like you look you look absolutely crazy that arm length so it's not going to like roll back into the u when you're uh delivering the lamb with the little gloves that just like the nitrile gloves that come down to here i'm always terrified that i'm going to be lambing and it's going to roll off so yeah these ones um you can just take them off and chuck them in the bin in between lambings and that way you're protecting yourself and your poor hands from any kind of allergic reaction and also you're helping the you um, and the lamb stay nice and healthy. I know some people are glove haters, but power to the glove, I say. 
So the next thing is a 100% must. This torch saved my life. So I was on night shifts and the lighting in the sheds was not giving me life. I couldn't really see that well. This torch is absolutely phenomenal. A little clip here so you can actually clip it onto like your waterproof so that way you can't lose it because it i'm not gonna lie having a torch this small if you drop this in the shed goodbye like i dropped it a few times and only by sheer luck i found it again when you're driving around in the van at night when we put the lambs outside um this will light up like half the field i don't know how the hell they made it this strong fully worth the money and make sure you bring a torch because you will regret it if you don't so the next thing that i would really recommend taking is some kind of pen knife now i have one of these like swiss army knives here it has my name on that side um just so i don't get it confused with anyone else's and i found this really 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 useful um for cutting like baling twine it has a load of different blades and scissors and a toothpick and everything on it there's even like a screwdriver like a mini oh, a mini screwdriver which is so sick i'm not sure what you need a screwdriver for but you never know. I never just keep these, one of these in my pocket at all times. Now, the next thing similar to the torch is a headlamp. Headlight? One of these, basically. Am I going to model it? Am I really going to do this? So one press will turn the small light on. Uh, another press will turn the second light on if you need a bit more light. And then another press and it's off. <laughs> so yeah, so I found this quite useful for hands-free light source so it has a battery in here so all you need to do is make sure that you charge this before um before you go out on a night shift and i mean it does last for ages so i won't be too worried same about this i think i was there for three weeks and i literally could get away with charging this once every couple of days and then obviously you have things like a water bottle that you can take with you um i definitely didn't drink enough during the last place because i forgot to take a water bottle uh, which was a bit stupid but yeah just take a water bottle and even like a thermos flask kind of thing just so you can make tea coffee things like that and take them down with you to the shed so you don't have to keep going back if you're in between lamins so some more little kind of small random things um one of these <laughs> this is a nail brush as you can see this one's a little piggy i even chucked a bottle of hand sanitizer in do you really need this probably not if you've got a tap and water there but like if you're having snacks and stuff and you don't have access to like hot water this will not kill anything real nasty but it just makes you feel a little bit better if you're like snacking in the middle of the night you don't want really to go off and wash your hands make sure that you take snacks now the farm that i said in before were really really good so they fed us like a lot <laughs> i thought i'd end up losing weight lambing but i probably ended up gaining quite a bit so if you want to take snacks that are in packets so don't take anything that's going to be loose and like floating around your bag now one thing that i struggled with lambing was the weather obviously living in the uk you have literally no idea what the weather's going to be doing so i packed for all circumstances so i packed sunscreen for if it was hot um my sunscreen's down there somewhere but yeah i packed sunscreen for if it was hot and i also packed beanies and fleeces for if it was cold if it is hot then take like a baseball cap i have a few like um baseball cap type hats i've got some really nice ones from fairfax and favor which will not be coming with me because there's no way they're getting covered in poop so the last like random bits that you probably want to include are things like hair bubbles um hair clips you know those like headbands that keep all your hair back take a few of those a hot water bottle as I was saying before, you have no idea what the weather's going to do. And if your farmhouse doesn't have um, central heating that they turn on, you'll freeze to death as I did. So I really wish I'd taken the uh, water bottle with me. So this year, this is going to be coming with me. So yeah, now we will go on to clothing. So I'm not going to go through like every single piece of clothing that I took. But I'll just give you like kind of an overview of the things that work for me. So the first thing is a boiler suit. Now our university issue us boiler suits. This one's literally brand new. My other one, my significantly more beaten up one, is in the wash somewhere. I didn't actually end up wearing my boiler suit that much whilst I was there. I kind of went more with the waterproof trousers um, and like a long sleeve top and then fleece and a coat because it was absolutely freezing. The only thing with these is I didn't want to like get my boiler suit dirty and then wear the same one all week so i kind of would interchange this with a few other pieces so that's one thing i would say um a lot of farmers are happy to do that you're washing for you but some of them like won't and that's completely fair 
of washing costs money and obviously you're there like as a guest kind of even though you're working so and I didn't really like asking people to do my washing like I felt a bit uncomfortable about that because I'm British and that's what we do so similar to my boiler suit is the piece de resistance so yeah this is the Kwaka storm force overalls very loud so super comfortable the inside i think it is waterproof okay work on make really high quality things and so i'd really recommend them um they're expensive i will say if you're going to purchase one of these i purchased one last year with the intent of this seeing me through my whole degree and then some but these you just know they're going to last like years because they're a fantastic quality they have some pockets here this obviously if it's bad weather is going to be way more useful than the boiler suit the boiler suit is this kind of material it is not waterproof and um if you get like if you kneel in something you'll get soggy knees this on the other hand will protect you from any spills or anything and also it's way easier to take off than the boiler suit you don't have to like unbutton it and get out of it this you can just um take off the straps here and then just like pull it down and then pull it back up so yeah I also have like a gilet, a fur line gilet from Kwaka and that's amazing too. And it kind of looks like this. So <laughs> you can't really see it that well. It has um, a fur line in it here. It's completely waterproof and the like bum, the back, the like back of the gilet like covers your bum. So if you sit down, you won't get a wet butt, which is great. Um, I got this in a size small. It's very small, could have done with the medium. So I'll probably take this with me as well, depending on what the weather's looking like at the time. So along the same lines as like the overalls and the boiler suit and stuff, I took my university issued waterproofs. So this is a um, parlor top here. Yeah, this one's a long sleeve one. Um, I didn't end up using the long sleeve one whilst I was in place because it's really annoying to have to keep rolling your sleeves up. So I, I also got a short sleeve one, which, um is with my waterproof trousers which is another thing but they're currently in my boot bag downstairs um due to be washed so yeah some waterproof trousers a, a parlor top long sleeve or short sleeve depending on your preference i'd probably be more likely to go with the short sleeve ones just because you don't want to keep having to roll your sleeves up um constantly it gets really annoying so you're always going to need things like polo shirts um long sleeve tops this is just again my uni issued polo tops for placement so just have your name and the uni logo on take enough for like one fresh top every day that you're there even if that means you end up taking like 14 tops like honestly you will want a fresh top the next day <laughs> so don't make sense they got it things like fleeces are also really great to take fleeces are really good even if it's kind of like even if you think it's going to be warm on the day just take a fleece down to the shed with you because uh, by night it might end up cooling up a bit obviously you're going to need some wellies so i'd recommend shoes wise actually taking three different kinds of shoes i take my like um welly boots so they are the university they're not university issue but university likes you to have steel toe cap boots so i take my steel toe cap boots a pair of like short boots like chelsea looking boot things mine are blundstone boots they are absolutely incredible i'll put a photo up here mine are absolutely disgusting you do not want to see them but they have like been through some stuff and they've still like they're still hanging on there also some farm shoes now these can be a pair of trainers or like some slides or something um just for you to wear like when you're not lambing because you do not want to go and just turn up with welly boots and then you've got to wear welly boots like no matter what you do then so yeah that's kind of everything for this video that i really wanted to cover hopefully that was useful for some of you that are going lambing either this year or maybe next year or in a few years time whenever you find this video um but yeah i really hope you enjoyed it and if you've been lambing before i'd really love to hear about the things that you take i'm sure there's loads of things that i've missed off um my checklist so feel free to comment down below um some of the things that you love to take with you lamin and share that with everyone so yeah that's all for me so thank you so much for watching if you enjoy this type of content feel free to like comment subscribe hit the notification bell do all those things um you can follow me over on instagram at the secret vet um drop off on the screen thank you so much for listening and i hope you have a lovely day and i'll speak to you soon bye